Hey folks, Tom with Arnold Lumber here again. You know, when it comes to siding your home, there are so many options, it can be hard to make a decision. On today's episode of Breaking Ground, we'll be heading back out to the Demetric House Rights Project in Charleston, Rhode Island, with our friends from Azac Siding. We'll be looking at a beautiful installation of a board and batten siding application that not only looks great, but is sustainable and long lasting. So follow us along on this episode of Breaking Ground. We'll show you how it's done. Arnold Lumber has been a partner of New England builders and homeowners for over a hundred years. Our goal is to elevate projects to their highest potential through top quality product solutions and above and beyond service on all projects from start to finish. Now, we're teaming up with industry leaders and the area's best builders to give you insights on the latest material technologies, best practices, and unique projects. This is Breaking Ground. Today with our exteriors uh, expert from AZEC Exteriors, Thomas Hartman. Thomas, thanks for joining us here today. Of course. Um, we want to talk a little bit about what's special about this home here now in the exterior. Uh, maybe you could walk us through a little bit of what we're, uh, what we're working with here today and how it goes up. Before we actually put the product up, we want to make sure that we're using the right products behind it to protect the home. Here we have a high quality weather resistant barrier that one allows that the house to heat and cool appropriately so it acclimates to the weather, whether it be summer, spring, winter, or fall, the house still has to breathe. They've also done a great job here adding these furring strips, creating a rain screen. Now these are composite furring strips and it allows moisture to work its way back. If we were to apply the panel directly to the wall space, um, we have potential of damming that up and not allowing that wall to breathe appropriately. So the rain screen is very important to this application. What's the danger of it not breathing on um, so, the exterior? So think about what's behind the weather resistant barrier. That's your sheathing, yeah. that's your studs, that's your insulation. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to your studs and insulation yeah. and see it into your drywall, yeah. you've, you already have a full rot repair issue. That's not good. Not good. But if we have this wrap on the house, then uh, what's the concern that we need to have it dry out anyway? It allows you know the hot air from inside the house to come out. And what we really want to do is we want to allow that wood, the sheathing, the studs to acclimate because wood always has moisture. So when we talk about acclimation, that's what happens when we talk about a house settling. Why don't we go ahead and take a look then at the, uh, the siding getting up on the house and the stages that it goes through when we're doing installation. Of course, let's go take a look. All right, let's go around the other side. All right, Thomas, can you talk to us a little bit about the material, sort of the stock material itself? Yeah, so this is our uh, standard AZEC PVC sheet and trim. AZEC is a high quality PVC manufacturer that has the most titanium dioxide uh, in the board. So really the TiO2 or titanium dioxide uh, keeps the board white for a long period of time. That's why we're able to add a limited lifetime warranty to our product. So the application on the board and batten home that we'll be working with is a half inch sheet, four by eight, four by 10, or four by 12. You have the option based on any uh, wall space. And then we'll be using a one by two batten strip. So the batten strip um, is available in both classic white and paint pro. So if you happen to be painting your, your siding, you can paint it any color you want from black to white. You talk about it keeps it whiter. Is that for a UV inhibitor of some sort? Is it, uh, does it matter what side on the house that it goes on? Yeah, so there's no limitation with it, right? PVC can go anywhere. Um, right. and, and the additives are there to preserve the product, to keep it white. Where with fiber cement and wood and all of our competitive products, mm -hmm. you have to have constant upkeep and maintenance. With PVC, it goes up white and stays white for a long period of time. Do you ever need to clean it? Uh, yeah, so sometimes you can get some surface mold, yeah. uh, and that's as simple as taking a, a hose or a light pressure wash to it, uh -huh. and it clears it right off. Just like my lawn chairs in the back. Yeah. It, exactly, right. exactly. Why don't we take a closer look at it up on the house and talk to us a little bit about how it should be installed up on the wall once we've got our sheathing and our wrap up. Of course, let's go take a look. All right, let's take a look at that. All right, so the board's going up here, Thomas. Why don't you let us know and the folks watching what we're looking at here? Yeah, so the application is very simple here. 
Uh, we're gonna take that standard half inch sheet. This happens to be a four or half inch four by 10. Um, and we're gonna start it on the wall space. Being the nature of PVC, there is uh, expansion and contraction based on the cell structure. We wanna build in some areas uh, for that board to move if it does move, okay? But rest assured, your batten strip will be covering up every seam, okay? So there will be no open joints or anything like that. Uh, it will give you that finished look. Okay. So the fastening pattern here is we wanna fasten as close to the edge as possible without chipping it out. And then we want to figure out what our batten spacing is. The great thing about this is you can get very unique with the batten spacing to where you can space it a 12, a 16, or 24 inches on center. Okay. And these guys have done a great job by laying it out. So they've chalked their lines so they have vertical seams. Mm -hmm. Boom. Everything's the next, line yep, right up. exactly. So they use uh, trim head screws here, which is a great application. You can use coil siding nails. But really what we're looking for in this application is the ability for uh, wind load hold. So we need a fastener that will uphold wind load right. uh, because that's very important to make sure your siding doesn't fly off the wall space. And does that come with recommendations so everyone knows exactly what they ought to use? Yeah, so in our installation guidelines, we have all of our recommended and approved fasteners that, that can be used in there along with the the different details of different applications for the board and batten siding. Oh, makes life easy for us. Then. Oh yeah. Now when uh, we're putting our batten strip over uh, our gap here and you're talking about movement, movement is there any uh, concern or worry about moisture getting in that gap under the batten strip? Yeah, so the great thing about PVC, it's imper impervious to moisture. Right. So what I like to use it as, it's the uh, anti-perspirant of building products. Okay. Uh, so where other products fail like wood, fiber cement due to moisture, PVC actually repels it. So we're not worried about the product failing and we the they've done such a great job with the weather resistant barrier behind right, there right. that we're allowing it to breathe mm -hmm. uh, without having to worry about any rot or anything behind it. Got it. All right, so there's no need to worry about the boards touching each other when you put them up. Exactly, so we built that in right there. So if it were to move, we have an eighth inch gap there to allow that that expansion and contraction without it buckling into one another. Got it, in either direction. Yep, exactly. All right, great. Why don't we take a, a little bit closer look then at the batten going up on the wall. Of course. And uh, the final step of it dressing up. Cool. All right, so here are the batten strips now going up on the sheet stock material that's been uh, fastened to the wall. Uh, what should we be mindful of here as we're applying the batten strips? Yeah, so we wanna get the proper spacing. So when we talk about on center, we wanna start from the middle of the wall and then work our way out, okay. okay? So if we're going 12 inches or 16 or 24 inches on center, we're gonna measure that off from that center point of the wall. Got it. And then that way we'll have a consistent fastening schedule with our batten strips. Understood, all right. Um, here are some battens going up now. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what kind of fasteners we're using here and how we get a nice finished look once they're put up. Yeah, so uh, we're using a one by two batten strip here. Um, and here we have Cortex screw and plug. This is the best case uh, application for the fastening schedule because here uh, it will actually bite into the, uh, not only through the batten, but also into the sheathing and then into the wall space. So that gives us a really good bite, but also gives us the wind load rating that we're looking for. Got it. And uh, so this fastener will uh, be countersunk on its own uh, below the surface of the batten strip. Yes. Then what? We'll be left with a hole, right? Yeah, so the, the great thing about it, it is cross-threaded, so it actually drives in and it bores a hole for the plug to fit in. Mm -hmm. So really, when we finish the product or project and we paint it, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a finished concealed look without any fastener showing. So these batten strips can all be painted? Yes. Can this yep. whole surface be painted if we want it to? Yeah, so you can paint it any color you want from black to white. Got it. This house, I think, will be uh, finished all white. Mm -hmm. um, but if they wanted to do, you know, any different color, they certainly can. One of the things I, I like about it is it allows us to um, really take advantage of being responsible environmentally. Um, tell us a little bit about the material and its nature, recycled content, and the, the ability to recycle it. Yeah. So for years to come, uh, or year, previous years, excuse me, yeah. uh, PVC had been just going to landfill. And we all know that PVC has a really long shelf life. Uh, yeah. to where it may take you know, 20, 30, 40 years for it to degrade. Mm -hmm. Well, 
We've done our part as AZEC company into becoming a more sustainable partner and erasing our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. So we actually uh, purchased a company called Return Polymers where they recycle all of our PVC scrap to be used into the reproduction of our goods. Does that affect its quality in any way? No, no, not at all. Um, so you'll see it in our decking on the timber tech side and then also into our uh, PVC exterior side. That's fantastic. So all the material on this site that's not getting used can put, get put into recycle and can get put into brand new siding for another project down there. Correct. Road. Yep. Love it. Yep. Well, it's a great story about sustainability. Um, which our friends at Demetric House Rights are all about, as you've seen in uh, earlier episodes of uh, this particular project. But we look forward to having you back again. Sure. I'm sure we have many more projects to work on. All right, that's it for another episode. A big thank you to Demetric House Rights and our friends from Azac Exteriors. Uh, if you like what you saw in this episode, please make sure you follow our channel and subscribe below. And if there are other ideas you'd like to see on future episodes, please put in the comments below. We'd love to hear your feedback. That's it for this episode of Breaking Ground. We'll see you next time.